guys, this is Animat, and welcome back to the Muppet Vlog. Now this time we're going to be looking into the 24th episode of the second season of the Muppet Show, which includes Cloris Leachman. Now for those of you who are unfamiliar with Cloris Leachman, she is actually more well known on television, where she actually made her big break in the 70s when she played the role of Phyllis Lindstrom in the Mary Tyler Moore Show, which the character ended off being so popular that she ended off getting her own series with Phyllis. But not only that, she is a very prominent actress of not only television, but also on film, where she was she was featured in many different movies, including those made by Mel Brooks, and especially in the 70s, she has appeared in a few movies, but even continuously after, like, in the 80s, and then in the 90s, and even in the 2000s. And uh, her fame still stands on to this day, where she is known to be one of the more popular actresses that's still going on in her Twilight years. In fact, she is actually known to be the oldest contestant at the age of 82 to perform in Dancing with the Stars. And uh, I would also like to add for animation fans, you might actually find the name Cloris Leachman to be pretty familiar, as she has appeared in the Disney dubs of Studio Ghibli films like Castle in the Sky and Ponyo, and she has also appeared in other animated films like The Iron Giant and in The Croods. And going into the episode of The Muppet Show that she has appeared in, it's actually really interesting on how mixed that I actually feel about this. Like, there are some really, really good elements in this, but then again, there are also some elements that do make this a really weak episode. Now, this, uh, this is the kind of episode that really does center around a plot. And the story goes, in this episode in particular, is that, like, right off the bat, it starts out that suddenly the show is entirely dominated by pigs. What basically happened was that pigs immediately took over the show. Like, they kidnapped Kermit, they kidnapped, like, most of the Muppets that are not really pigs, and they just threw them off in the boiler room. And at that point, Kermit, Fozzie, and Gonzo had to figure out how to escape and pretty much try to, you know, try to bring back the show in their hands instead of the pigs. Because literally, the rest of the episode and, like, what everything this, ep like, the, the episode is, is that this is all about the pigs. And, like, they really stuck to the theme of pigs conquering the show. They even made sketches that, like, they replaced the characters as pigs. They made a Swedish chef with a pig. Uh, they made Veterinarian's Hospital, where everybody's a pig, not just Miss Piggy. Uh, then you also have uh, Muppets News Flash, where they also have a pig. Like, uh, they even have a Fozzie Bear skit, where Fozzie is now a, uh, like, Fozzie is a pig. And, like, even the MC, like, Kermit is replaced by a Kermit pig. And so, basically, that was the entire theme. It's like, every everybody is pretty much uh, replaced by a pig because pigs suddenly decided to take over. And it really was spontaneous. And, honestly, this is where I feel really mixed about this episode. Because, on one hand, in terms of, like, having a backstory, like, telling a narrative from beginning to end, this is probably one of the strongest episodes that do that. Like, at the same time where you see all the, uh, like, all the skits going on on stage where they're now performed as pigs, you also take a look at backstage and you see what's going on there, like, where you see Kermit, Fozzie, and Gonzo when they're in this dilemma trying to figure out what to do, like, how to get, you know, how to escape the boiler room and, t you know, get back, you know, like, get the show back in their hands. While at the same time, like... There, there's actually another interesting bit where you see a lot of development from Miss Piggy, actually. Where, like, you see her dilemma where, on one hand, she wants to be the star of the show, and, like, now that the pigs are taken over, like, she can pretty much be very prominent in there. They even did all the skits that feature Miss Piggy. Like, not only was she in the opening bit, but she was also, like, in Veterinarian's Hospital. And, of course, they did a Pigs in Space episode because, well, pigs. And, uh, but at the same time, like, she really wants to be the star of the show. But on the other hand, she still loves Kermit. And, like, th there's a side where she has to pay, like, she has to decide either on show business or, like, stay with her love with Kermit. 
And you know, like, it does show a bit of, mi like, who Miss Piggy is, and, you know, it it's honestly quite fascinating on that side. And not to mention that there are, there is some good humor that does come out of, like, Kermit, Fozzie, and Gonzo stuck in the boiler room and try to find a way to escape. So, like, pretty much have this whole prison break scenario. But the one thing that I'm not really, like, so excited about, what they did with this episode is that most of it is all pig jokes. Like, there are a few times when, like, it does stick to the theme of the original sketch that it is. Like, when it was the Swedish chef, like, yeah, like, the, like, the Swedish chef is now a pig, but, like, it's still the Swedish chef. But most of what's been going on is that all of them are replaced by pigs, and so all they do is just pig jokes. And, like, some of them, like, whenever they don't do pig jokes, like, often, like, the Veterinarian's Hospital, now it's called Vegetarian's Hospital, and all they do is just a series of terrible food puns, and that's it. So, like, the, like in terms of the jokes, like, what's going on on stage, it's not all that great. It's not really the most entertaining of them all. And it's, like, honestly, it's not all that strong. But then you also have the special guest star, Cloris Leachman, probably the only one they did not replace as a pig. And what's actually worth noting is that considering how, like, it has such a strong story, um, the, like, it does actually diminish the presence of Cloris Leachman. They don't really use her as much. The thing is, is that they're so focused on having this episode be entirely pig-based that Cloris Leachman only appeared in a total of just two sketches, and, like, that's pretty much it. Like, this is probably the less that we've seen from a special guest star, and, uh, honestly, she had little to do with anything that's going on, except for one little bit in her first number, and then right at the end, but other than that, it, it, that's all. Like, she only appeared when she would sing, um, like, this classic opera thing with Link Hogfrob, and, uh, and then finally, at the end, she would sing Just In Time with Sweet- with, uh, Sweetums and another monster, like, after everything has been cleared out and the pigs suddenly went away. And, um, other than that, it, like, that's pretty much it. And, like, another thing that I notice is that, like, I, this- I, I don't mean any offense to Cloris Leachman, but- they did not depict her as the smartest person on stage in there because she was so easily fooled that the Kermit the Pig was actually the same Kermit that she would see all the time in the show because like they really set like she was really set up to know like she knows the Muppets so much she sees the she sees the show every week and then like when she sees Kermit the Pig she knows that that's a pig that's not Kermit the Frog and then, like, when, like, the moment that the pig just goes ribbit, like, oh, suddenly it's like, oh, it is you, Kermit. It's like, yeah, like, really? After that entire statement, suddenly you're gonna switch your brain to, okay, that is Kermit. I, like, I, I don't know. That, it's just that she's not depicted as, I, she's not depicted as smart as she probably is. And, like, I guess they just want to do it as a gag, but it's still not that strong. So, yeah, like, this is honestly the most minimal use of their special guest star because they wanted to focus on the story that they have. So, overall, I am very mixed on this episode. On one hand, it is one of the weaker episodes of The Muppet Show. It's almost like uh, the Petula Clark episode where they, like, all they want to do is just moose jokes, but in this case, it's just dumb pig jokes and really bad puns on the side, so, like, the, like most of the episode is just consisted on that, and plus the fact that they barely use their special guest star at all. I mean, uh, like, it, it's not really in the same veins of, like, the Bob Hope episode, where, like, he's there, but he doesn't really do much, it's just that she, like, I feel like they barely looked into Cloris Leachman, she only had time to appear in two sketches, two musical numbers, well, like, two, like, two musical numbers that are sketches, 
And that's pretty much it. But on the other hand, it is stronger than the Petula Clark episode because it does have a really strong story. It has something very interesting going on. Um, like, th this has a plot line where I'm actually pretty invested in and see how they would get out of their situation and how, like, how is it that suddenly all the pigs were pretty much dominating uh, the Muppet Show. And it was really fascinating. And uh, I guess what I want to say is that is it the be is it one of the best episodes that I've seen of the Muppet Show? Absolutely not. It's definitely in the category of one of the weaker ones, but I wouldn't say that this is one of the worst ones. Like this, like they, like it has some really strong elements, but um, like because of those strong elements, it kind of takes it away from being a bad episode per se. So. Overall, this is more of a mix for me. But anyways, uh, that is not only it for this episode, but this is pretty much it for the season, believe it or not. So, with all that said, I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, until next time, let us figure out how did season 2 go? Is it as good? Like, did they improve upon stuff since season 1? Are there a lot more memorable aspects? Is it good? Is it bad? We'll have to wait and see for next week, so until then, see you later dudes!